Playing Star Wars Squadrons over the last couple months has been an exhilarating experience, but there's no denying this game has a very steep learning curve, and that can be intimidating to any new player. With a wave of fresh faces bound to arrive over the course of the holiday season, I wanted to make a video specifically for these newcomers and arm them with the information they need to have a more successful and enjoyable Squadrons experience. What's up you guys, I'm not amazing, I'm just meaty yogurt, and these are the biggest mistakes a beginner in Star Wars Squadrons might make that you will want to avoid. Let's get right into it. The first big mistake a new player could make is to skip the campaign and go straight into multiplayer. While you're only required to play through the prologue in order to unlock multiplayer, it's highly recommended you finish that 14 mission campaign. It will slowly introduce you to the complexities of piloting your starfighter, as well as give you flight time in each and every single ship that's available on either side of the conflict. It is very important, every single one of these starfighters have some very different performance characteristics and you'll want to know how each of them behave. Coinciding with that, after you're done with the campaign, you're going to want to spend a lot of time in the Fleet Battles vs. AI before you try to tackle Fleet Battles on Ranked Mode. This will give you ample time and opportunity to experiment with which Starfighter class you like in particular, whether that's Fighter, Interceptor, Bomber, or Support, as well as develop a specific loadout that you like to use and that you feel fits your playstyle best. So definitely don't try to rush into those ranked fleet battles without putting some hours into the fleet battles versus AI first. Getting into the piloting portion of this video, you actually don't want to maintain balanced power systems. While you might intuitively think that would give you the most general effectiveness, you're actually robbing yourself of all the potential benefits that overcharging your systems will give you, and giving yourself actually a big disadvantage in the process. Overcharged engines give you that speed boost, overcharged lasers do increased damage, and overcharged shields give you that double extra layer of health giving you that increased survivability which is extremely important in winning fleet battles and maintaining the morale for your team. Coinciding with that, it's also very important to learn how to balance the shield on a shielded vessel from forward to backward, or power shunt if you're in an Imperial vessel like the TIE Bombers, TIE Fighters, and TIE Interceptors. As a shielded vessel, the value of moving HP from where you have it to where you need it cannot be overstated. In this clip you see right here, I'm trying to make an attack run, but also being pursued from behind. And where my shields get ripped out from behind, I actually moved my extra shields that were still existent in the front of my ship to the back of my ship, which allowed me to complete my attack run, get my proton torpedo off, and escape the attacker at the same time. With all that stated, power shunting found on Imperial's unshielded vessels is equally as valuable, giving you the ability to instantly overcharge your engines or lasers at the cost of the other systems. It makes you extremely flexible in combat, and if you aren't abusing this system on a near constant basis, then you as an Imperial are definitely putting yourself at a disadvantage, just as much as a rebel might be by not balancing their shields. This next mistake is actually really easy to fix and it has to do with when you're stunned by ion damage. Your starfighter will be completely disabled and you'll be drifting through space with a prompt on your screen that says mash any button. And when I first saw this I thought it might mash every button on your controller but that's not actually the case. You're just supposed to pick one button on the controller and mash just that one button until the stun status ends. And if you pick a different button, it actually kind of interrupts the speed with which you can mash the buttons on your controller. So pick just the one and press that one until your stun status ends. Next up, we have a lack of awareness on the battlefield. Specifically when you're pushing into enemy territory or when you should be retreating from enemy territory. It's really easy to get tunnel visioned on a single target and chase them either too far into the enemy territory or not notice that they got some friends and backup wingmen that are coming in to destroy you. But it's also very important to notice when the morale bar has flipped. 
Too many times I see enemy players still trying to push and attack the objective, attack the flagship, when it's long since been flipped and they should have turned around, fled back to their own side, and gotten on defense by then. Make sure you don't fall prey to the lack of battlefield awareness. Pay attention to what's going on around you so you don't end up victim of an easy slay. Another really simple mistake to make is attacking only enemy players. While they might seem like your primary target on the battlefield, it would be a grave mistake to ignore the other targets available to you, particularly on defense. When computer-controlled starfighters are worth 4 morale points apiece and typically fly in squadrons of 5, giving you easy access to 20 morale points, as well as the enemy corvette or raider that spawns in that is also worth 20 morale points, in addition to being capable of wreaking intense damage to your capital ships and starfighters. So taking out that raider or corvette is of high priority when you're on defense if you want to prevent damage from being inflicted on your team. However, once we flip over to offense, one of the biggest mistakes a new player can make is by trying to play outside the role of their class. What I mean by that is we have our four types of ships, and they're each specialized to perform a different specific job. So if you are a bomber, you're not doing your team any favors by trying to chase down interceptors. You're simply not going to be able to keep up with them, and vice versa. If you're an interceptor, you should not be trying to take on capital ships. Your weak little frame is going to absolutely get torn to shreds. You need to make sure you're sticking to the specializations that your particular starfighter has been built for. It's pretty simple. If you're a bomber, stick to attacking capital ships. And if you're an interceptor, stick to taking down enemy starfighters, in particular ones that are targeting your own friendly bombers. And if everybody executes their jobs properly, you're all going to find a lot more success in your fleet battles. However, it's going to be difficult for your friends to know what their jobs should be if you're not communicating with them. So the next big mistake I want to make sure you avoid making is forgetting to use your ping system. The ping allows you to highlight any enemy that you have targeted for all of your teammates to see and accept as a target. And bringing two starfighters to bear is always better than trying to take on somebody by yourself. In fact, if you play this game with a co-pilot and you're consistently team firing on the enemy starfighters, they're going to have a very hard time fighting back against you unless they also have a well-coordinated team. So make sure you're taking advantage of the ping system, highlighting enemies, and bringing as many of your friendly starfighters to bear on a target so you can eliminate them as quickly as possible. However, none of those mistakes can hold the candle to the single biggest mistake that any new squadrons player needs to avoid making, and that's attacking your enemies head on. Whether that's in the form of starfighter jousting as seen in the most recent episode of The Mandalorian, or you're attacking an enemy capital ship by flying directly at its fully shielded bow, you're making a bad decision. In the case of starfighter jousting, you're giving yourself at best a 50-50 chance to survive the encounter, and those are terrible odds. But if you're flying directly at the front of an enemy capital ship, you're pretty much signing your own death warrant there. Not only will every single gun on that ship be trained on you, you're also likely being targeted by the five starfighters set to defend that capital ship as well by making yourself such an easy and obvious target. I have won too many fleet battles that I should have lost because the enemy kept feeding them to, to us like lemmings, just flying straight at the front of our capital ship with no actual strategy or attack plan involved, allowing us to easily flip the morale meter and discontinue their attack runs. Guys, you need to learn how to execute proper attack runs on enemy capital ships, and if you don't know how to do that already, I highly recommend you click the video you see on your screen right now. It gives you a breakdown on how to win fleet battles, starting from the very beginning and going all the way up onto how to destroy those extremely powerful capital ships. I hope to see you guys there, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like on it and hit the subscription button so you don't miss the next one. In the meantime, I'm not amazing, I'm just mediocre, and I'm out.